So, we go on with the VOEP topic with uh, Vlad Payou, who will speak about uh, distributed VOEP uh, platforms. Let's applause him. Okay, hello everybody. My name is Vlad Payou, and I'll be talking about how to build some distributed web platforms using OpenSIPs, how we did things, what approaches we took along the way, how we fixed some issues, all of it using OpenSIPs and a couple of other open source tools out there in the wild. First of all, let's take a look at how the current status of most of the web platforms and the web software around is. So, out of the box, everything is most likely single SIP server instance. So, you're only getting capabilities for operating a single SIP server. Obviously, uh, there are um, ways to achieve redundancy, various types of redundancy, like, let's say, active backup via some um, virtual IP software, either VRP or Heartbeat. But overall, at the end of the day, you're limited in terms of how many subscribers you can put, you can jam on a single box, and how many calls per second or concurrent calls you can put over there. And even if, let's say, you're running some high-performance piece of software like OpenSIPs, there are still some reasons why you wouldn't like to put that many things on a single box. And here are a couple of them. For well, first of all, you wouldn't like to have a single box because of geographical reasons. Most likely, your, us your users are spread across the globe. They're not, every everybody's not from the same country, obviously, and you want to cover the entire map in order to provide better voice quality to everybody. So you don't stream media from Europe to Asia or to the United States and so on. Furthermore, let's say, even if you have a software that's performed really, really well, you wouldn't like to put all that traffic on the same box. You would prefer to, to balance it across multiple machines in order to, be, to better resist certain types of burst of traffic. Or if you, for whatever reasons, you want to pull out some machines and do some um, maintenance work or whatever. So it doesn't really matter if you can do it on a machine, it's a matter if you don't want to do it in the end. Also, redundancy. As I mentioned, solutions of active backup, redundancy are all over the place, but having a backup in terms of, in terms of a data center redundancy is also great, because what happens if your entire data center goes down? You don't want to lose having the ability to provide your service to the users. So, this is the, those are the issues where we'll be trying to solve, and here's a short outline of what we'll be going through. First of all, for those who, you, who might not know it, OpenSIPS is an uh, open source SIP server. It's highly programmable, flexible, and you have lots of modules to choose to, to build whatever SIP infrastructure you want. And also it is highly scalable. It can handle up to 20,000 calls per second and millions of parallel calls. We can achieve these high numbers because again, we are a SIP server, we are handling just the signaling part. There is no media flowing in or out of open SIPs. And because of these, you can use it for various scenarios like SBCs, trunking, various call center types, registrations, proxies, whatever. So you can use open SIPs to either build your SIP infrastructure from zero, or you can use open SIPs to glue together various parts of your already existing SIP network. So, just a short outline, this would be like a much better architecture that we should strive for, like to have multiple points of presence across the world, and within each point of presence, within each data center, to have two or more open SIP servers that would be able to, uh, to handle the traffic. This way we can handle both the um, failure of a single server, but also handling the failure of one or more data centers. And of course, you would need to have some way of communication between all of these uh, points of presence because in the end you're providing a single SIP serv service to your users. So you want to synchronize various information. So our objecti objective is to have multiple points of presence which are geo-distributed that act as a whole by sharing multiple types of information. First we have internal info 
which is kind of stuff related to the actual SIP protocol, like ongoing calls, registrations, whatever. And secondly, there is the type of runtime information that helps you while you are uh, routing your user's calls, like uh, whether the user has enough traffic for you to accept the call, whether the user has um, exhausted the number of concurrent channels that you have allocated to him, and so on. So there is a very big need for us to be able to share all kinds of these data in a geo-distributed way. And we decided to not reinvent the wheel for this, and we decided to make use of various NoSQL engines in order to link everything together. And obviously this is, was not such an easy thing to do because of the things I'll show further on. First of all, there are lots of NoSQL solutions, and obviously there is no standard query language for them, so we had to implement various connectors for all of them. So right now we support Redis, Memcached, Cassandra, MongoDB, and Couchbase. And also, we, since we lacked some standard query language, we tried to make a uniform API for things that are very commonly used in, um, while you are write, writing your routing script. For example, you want to fetch a key or remove a key from the actual sharing engine. Or, for example, us in VoIP are dealing a lot with counters. How much credit do you have? That's a counter. How many ongoing calls do you have? That's a counter. So we also expose that to this uniform access API. So what we, you have now is you can write your scripts in one single way, no matter what engine you are using, whether it's Memcache, Cassandra, MongoDB, and so on. So this helps in portability, and also it can help you, let's say, you cannot make your mind, which is better for your particular use case, Cassandra or MongoDB, no issue write your open SIP script and then benchmark it in your lab against Cassandra and MongoDB, but using the same test, testing, uh, testing script. Um, further on, let's, since we support so many uh, NoSQL engines, each of them has its good parts. So you, will, you don't want to be limited to this simple set of uniform API. So we also supported raw specific queries for each of the backends which again gives you full uh, ac access to the full capabilities of the actual engine. So this was cool, nice, but we also had lots of issues like what happens to, how do we help the OpenSIP users out there that are, have already deployed at their platforms and are currently using just a regular SQL database? Or how do we make sure that all of those distributed points of presence have access to the same uh, provisioning information, which for most of the OpenSys modules was, was read from a regular SQL database. So in order to do this, we wrote a simple SQL to NoSQL converter, currently is just for MongoDB, works in process for Cassandra, which basically means that we can leave all those modules that are operating with the database uh, in place, don't change anything either on the scripts that the user has, either in our uh, development modules, and this converter will automatically translate from regular SQL to the language that MongoDB uh, understands, that, that JavaScript similar language. So this is very powerful, because if you imagine like you are running a messaging service, and um, your users, if they are offline, will be able to read, uh, when they come back online, they will be able to read that message, which you will give to them from a regular MySQL database. Well, if you're going distributed, probably you'll have to drop that MySQL uh, uh, sometime or another, and you can just plug in a MongoDB cluster, run it up, and change the URL, load this converter module, and that's it. The user can uh, send a message from um, the US, and the destination, can, destination user can retrieve it from Europe with zero changes from your part. So basically, we now reached an architecture like this, where you can have multiple points of presence, you can have uh, multiple open SIPs instances running, and the communication and sharing of all these uh, call states and credit states or whatever is done via this NoSQL cluster, which will, links, will link all of our pops. Still, things were not perfect, let's say. We encountered some issues actually within the same pop when it comes to achieving hot redundancy. Because failure does happen. Sorry. Whoops. 
when failure happens and our vective machine goes down, we would like to, um, uh, to be able to switch as fast as possible to the backup. And um, let's see why this wasn't possible until now, or was not very scalable. How things were running before is that we were using a regular database for storing the dialogues, obviously for persistency and for failover reasons. And how it works, obviously, usually what you had was an active and uh, its backup pair, which share the floating virtual IP. And the active server processing the traffic will always make sure to keep the database in sync with, in, with its internal memory. So basically, when a call started, it will go and write that uh, call record in the database. When it ended, it, could, uh, it will automatically remove it from the database. And when uh, the main server failed, you could just go to the um, uh, active server, and this, which is the new active server, sorry, and run the uh, specific command, the LGDB sync, which will go ahead, load all the dialogues from the database, and it should work. Well, this approach is flawed for two main reasons. First of all, if you're depend, depending on the type of traffic that you're having, if you're having high uh, calls per second and low uh, call duration, you will end up stressing the database and eventually it will become a bottleneck in your system. Secondly, what happens if we have one million concurrent calls and the server fails? Well, obviously, if, you, if we follow that scenario, the, the server will switch to active, we will run that command, and we will try to load one million records from the database. Which, no matter what type of server you're running on, it's bound to take some time. Even minutes is enough to, to make it so that when you have loaded all those dialogues from the database, they are no longer there. Because usually, um, let's say for VoIP, calls don't have an average of one minute, two minutes, or maybe so, so you have most likely ended up with stuck calls. And even worse, if those users were not free calls, they were, I don't know, prepaid, postpaid, you will keep eating up their credit until it's gone. Because there will be no, nobody else to, uh, to end the call for you. So we reached the conclusion that for large deployments where we were processing a significant amount of traffic for a single machine, we needed some real-time replication. We didn't want to, to rely on the database for synchronizing the machines, which was kind of not scaling for us. So we built this binary internal interface, which is one introduced in OpenSIP 1.10, the current release. And it's, this is meant to be a fast and efficient communication channel between a, well, two or multiple OpenSIP instances. And uh, this interface is really uh, data agnostic, so it doesn't care what you're synchronizing between them. So far, we're using it to synchronize dialog states, registrations, transactions, but it's up to the developer to, to implement whatever data it needs to replicate in real time. So how this works is basically when the user dials the phone, it, uh, the call will be related to the callee, and when the callee picks up the phone, uh, the active, current active server will send via this binary interface, will tell to the backup server that the dialogue has established. And let's say that later you, wanna, um, you want to do some maintenance or something on the backup server, you will just switch your floating IP. And when the user terminates the call, the now active server, the new reactive server will uh, tell the now backup server that the dialogues have, have terminated. So you can see that um, all the time they will be perfectly in sync and not relying on anything else. Configuration is fairly simple. You will just tell, on, uh, tell OpenSIPS on which interface to listen to and it also will have to tell him uh, to accept replicated dialogues from uh, other um, uh, IPs. Obviously, you will have to IP table that, uh, that first IP in order to not get any attacks. And then you will tell this current OpenSIPS instance where to replicate the dialogues that it is currently processing. And you can set this, um, this last parameter multiple times depending on your particular scenario. Let's say you want to have active-active, uh, an active-active uh, deployment. You will tell uh, each OpenSIPS to replicate information to each other. Or, yep. Or if you have like two actives and one backup, you can also do that. So it's, it's up to you how you, 
how you do it. So obviously now uh, things are kept, perfectly, are kept perfectly in sync and you can use this to replicate basically anything. So these are the conclusions. We can now be easily geo-distributed and offer the same uh, performance that OpenSIPS has come known, known for. We still have the time for one or two questions. Do you also have a solution when you're using RTP proxy? Uh, no, this is some work in progress that we're thinking about to be able to use RTP proxy in order to have uh, instant failover for, for it. But at the moment, they are completely decoupled. So uh, this is just for open SIPs. We have a question here. Hello. How do you manage in, the, in your high availability scenario the split brain issue as there are only two nodes? How do you manage the failover to be sure that they are not both working at the same time? Maybe you use uh, some dedicated uh, solutions for this? You are talking about this active active thing, yeah. active backup? Uh, active backup, active active, whatever you want. Uh, yeah, well, there are solutions out there like VRP, Heartbeat, that are, that are ensuring that uh, there is only one currently uh, active server. But it depends, you can, uh, might as well have active active if you have two servers. There's no need to keep one server doing nothing, so. No. Th there is uh, another computer that tells you're the master and you're the second. How, how is managed this uh, switch from uh, one master to the uh, other? The machines are talking between them, so yeah, you can theoretically have um, speed brain, but it, it's within your same network, this, this active uh, VIP switching. Ma if you're doing, if you, sorry? No, I was thinking usually what they put is a, a fencing device, a hard uh, stuff, so when one takes the lead, it switch, it cuts the power to the other. If they are close, it's... Yeah, this, this actual switching of, of keeping the VIP on a single machine is not handled directly by OpenSys, but you should use an external piece of soft, software that is dedicated for this. So, basically, you only have to trigger OpenSys to tell it, hey, you're now the active. The actual switching of virtual IPs and everything else is not handled directly by OpenSIPS. A last question? Hello. Uh, yeah. What about the quality of the call? Can I restrict it by po uh, point of presence? Uh, can you repeat, sorry? About the quality of call, yeah. let's say that I have a low bandwidth in one point of presence and yeah. I want to restrict it to 10 kilobps and in the other place 32, can I? Uh, well, again, you are talking about the media here, right? Yeah. As I said, OpenSIPS is just about signaling. You can uh, use OpenSIPS to tell, uh, to instruct it which R uh, RTP proxy will be used for a particular call. So you can use it to manipulate where the RTP flow will go through. If that, uh, if you're trying to prioritize some routes and uh, limit the, r the bandwidth for a specific uh, route for the RTP, but nothing more. So you cannot. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your question. Thank you for your talk. And as a little reward.